This is... Now it's time for science so simple, a caveman could do it. This is a caveman. Huh? Today we're going to teach this caveman how to build a strong structure. Ah! Hey, hey. Here are some boxes. Huh? 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 Go on and build a shelter, and I'll come back and see how it worked out. Uh, <laughs> No, no, no. That's not right. Ah! You need to build walls by stacking boxes on top of each other. That's how you build. Understand? Oh, yeah. I'll come back later and see how it worked out. Mm -mm, yeah. Uh-oh. Does that look right to you? Yeah. Look at those boxes. They're stacked on top of each other. Yeah. But if they are in tall stacks, what would happen if you push on the wall? Oh. You see? Walls don't stay up if you build like that. Let's try again. I'll help you this time. Huh. First, lay out the foundation <sighs> where your wall should go. Oh. <laughs> Now let's make the second level. No, no, don't put it right on top. You need to stack in between. That's how you make a strong wall. Okay, I'll come back later. Nice work. Why don't you give it a try? Looks strong. But you forgot a box. Ah. Huh? Join us next time when we talk about how to make a door. Huh? Welcome to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby, and I've built some of the finest pirate ships for some of the finest pirates this side of the Caribbean. And I can teach you to do the same. But first, you need to know your basics. Mass and volume. Let's start with volume! <laughs> but not that kind of volume. Which of these two chests do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Which of these two balloons do you think has more volume? Right, this one here. Volume is how much space something takes up. Which of these two chests has more volume? Hmm? That's right, they're the same. But which of these two chests has more mass? Which is heavier? Hmm, hard to tell, isn't it? But what if I told you that this one was empty and this one was full of treasure? Oh, ho, 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 ho. loonies. Now, which one has more mass? Hmm, that's right, this one. These two chests have the same volume, but this one has more mass. This chest has more volume than that one, but this one... My loonies! That chest does not have as much mass. Volume is how much space something takes up, and mass is how heavy something is. And when you look at them both together, you're looking at density. Join us next time on Shipbuilding for Pirates, and then we'll look at how volume, mass, and density work together to make something float. Oh, my precious, precious loonies. Are you all right, my pretties? They can't talk, so I'm not sure what they're saying. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic, and you will be granted entry. Well, Fuzzix, who is the next applicant for the Wizard Academy? Overwhelmo. Indeed it is I, Overwhelmo. And prepare to be overwhelmed. Would you be flabbergastified if I balanced this coin on its end? Not really, no. But would you be impressed if I was to balance this coin on top of this coin! Possibly. Prepare to be flustered and stupefied. Stupid. Stupid flustered as I balance three coins on their ends on top of this glass. Well, that certainly would seem like magic. Let us see. Okay. 
No pressure, Ovo Armo. You can do this. And now, I say, a magic word. A magic word! Ha 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 ha! And now, you must let me into your academy. Wait. What's under the cloth? What, what cloth? This cloth, nothing! Oh! Is that a magnet? This? No! The pull of the magnet is what's keeping those coins up. The magnet is just strong enough to keep the coins from falling. No! This is set... set dressing. It's just... <laughs> it was a good trick, but it's science, not magic. Well, yes. And you will see! You will see! I will be back! I, Overwhelmo, will return! And I will do such magic that you will need extra socks because I will knock them off! With my magic, you will need at least two pairs of socks, maybe three pairs of socks. We can still see you! No, you can't! Max Historica. is Leonardo da Vinci. Ciao. One of the greatest inventors to ever live. And this is a pile of wood. One of the greatest piles of wood to ever be piled. Now, Leonardo is going to construct a bridge out of this wood. This is Leonardo's hammer. One of the worst hammers in the history of hammers. Now, Leonardo must construct his bridge using no tools at all. No, that hasn't been invented yet. How will Leonardo construct a bridge using no tools at all? Well, he is one of the greatest scientific minds... <laughs> oh, um, one of the greatest scientific minds in history! <sighs> oh -ho! Each piece of wood is supported by another. And that's what's known as Leonardo da Vinci's self-supporting bridge. Leonardo's done it! But there is a flaw in the bridge. It's very strong when you apply downward force, but not so strong when you push on it sideways. Fortunately, Leonardo can devote his great mind to figuring out how to clean up his workshop. Ha-ha! <laughs> Join me, one of the greatest narrators in the history of narration, next time on More Max Historica. Now it's time for Science So Simple, a Caveman Could Do It. This is a caveman. Huh? This is a door. It is a well-known scientific fact that cavemen do not know how to open doors. Huh? This is Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. Ma? Our caveman thinks he can open the door if he uses force. Ah, yeah. Well, what if he was to walk briskly into the door? Uh, no, I... Then the force that he will hit the door with will be equal to his mass, or how much he weighs, times his acceleration, which will be walking speed to zero. It didn't work, did it? No. Looks like we need more force. If we want to increase the force, we need to increase the mass, increase the acceleration, or both. A rock! That's perfect. Uh. If the caveman holds the rock, he has a greater mass. Now we just need to increase the acceleration, which means going faster. Uh. Let's try running. Uh. Go on. A little further. That's good. Now the caveman is going to run at the door. To get more force, we've increased the mass to a caveman plus a rock. And we've increased the acceleration to go from running speed to... Zero. And there you have it. That's how Newton's second law works. Join us next time for how doorknobs work. What? 
The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic. And you'll be granted entry. Send in the next candidate. Oh, no, not Overwhelmo. Did someone say Overwhelmo? No, wait, no. Next. Oh, not that. Okay, okay, good, okay. Behold, it is I, Overwhelmo! Welcome back, Overwhelmo. If you can truly demonstrate magic, you may join the Wizard Academy. A glass of water! <laughs> No, no, wait, that is not a hot trick. Okay, hold on. Okay, and this, a waterproof playing card. I put the card on the glass and flip it upside down, and then I say the magic word. The magic word. And behold, magic! <laughs> okay. Yes? Is that it? Yes? Well, it's not magic. It is defying gravity! No. Nope. The water would fall and the card would fall to the floor. It's not magic. This is magic! No, it's science. Horse feathers! Look, the reason the water doesn't come out is the air at the top of the glass keeps it held in by suction. More air would have to get into this glass to decrease the suction, and because the playing card is keeping a seal on the glass, the suction of the air is holding the weight of the water up. Balderdash! Uh, all right, look, let's do a little experiment then, shall we? Let's move the playing card just a little bit from the edge of the glass. You see those bubbles? Yes. That's bad news. <laughs> Science, not magic. Well, I will return, and then you will see your mind will be melted by by the. No, that's not my music. Hold, hold. Will you will rule the day when? That's not my new order. Overwhelmo shall return. Welcome back to Shipbuilding for Pirates. I'm Swabby, and now we know what volume means, what mass means, and that together it can tell you something's density. Now let's find out why things float. Let's... Let's say we're out to sea and my treasure chest gets swept overboard. Oh no! But it's all right, it floats because it pushes enough water out of the way, displaces it to carry its mass. But. What if my treasure chest had more treasure in it? Well, we're giving it more mass, but not more volume. Too much mass and not enough volume, and it will sink. Oh no, my loonies! You need more volume if you want to float more mass. And that is why things float. I'm Swabby, and thanks for joining me on Shipbuilding for Pirates. Now it's time for Science So Simple, a caveman could do it. This is a caveman. Ah. This is a rock. Ah, knock! It is a well-known scientific fact that if this caveman were to try to move that rock, <laughs> he would not know how to do it easily. Poor caveman. But in ancient times, people learned how to move heavy rocks using ropes and rollers. Oh, wrong earth. Yes, rollers. Wrong earth. R rollers. Wrong earth. Close enough. Rollers make it much easier to move a heavy object. <laughs> But they aren't perfect. So the wheel was invented. The wheel is a simple machine and one of mankind's greatest inventions. But no, no, that's not how it works. No? Wheels go on axles, which go under a platform. Now you have something to place that heavy rock on to move it around. But all the 
these great inventions came after the time of the caveman. Cavemen had to do everything the hard way. <laughs> Join us next time for more science. <laughs> This episode is all about giving yourself super strength using mechanical advantage. Well, here's how you can use a rope to give yourself the strength of a superhero! Ha-ha! I am mechanical advantage using a rope man! Mechanical advantage using a rope, you need three things. First thing, a rope. I mean, obviously, that, that's a given, right? You, you know you need a rope. Okay, good. Then you need something to pull and something that will not move. What you do is you tie your rope to the thing that you want to pull. Then you tie the other end of the rope, you guessed it, to the thing that won't move. Now you pull from the middle like this. And it's very easy to pull the weight. Why? Because of mechanical advantage. You're using a small amount of force over a longer distance. But what if the weight is heavier? Then you lengthen the rope. Now we pull from the middle and it's easier. Why? Yes, mechanical advantage. A small amount of force over an even longer distance makes it easier to pull the weight. Let's max it out. Mechanical advantage using a rope man, away! High above the city, mechanical advantage using a rope man surveys the town looking for someone in trouble. There's someone. Oh, my minivan broke down and only 10 feet from my parking spot. If only there was someone who could help me. I'll help you. Mechanical advantage using a rope, man. I'm safe. Maybe you should try giving yourself some mechanical advantage using the rope. Mechanical advantage using a rope, man. Yes. Well, I was coming to that. So I have this really long rope, and I tie one end to something that's not going to move, like a tree. Or a steel coil, if you happen to have one. And then I take the other end, and I run all the way back, and I attach this end to the van. I call her Bessie. Then I go to the middle of the rope, and I pull on it sideways like this, giving myself a huge amount of mechanical advantage. Oh, it's working! It's working! Pulling, pulling. <laughs> Mechanical advantage using a rope, man! You're doing it! <laughs> Max Historica. Long, long ago, in the time of ancient Greece, there lived a genius named Archimedes. One day he was in the tub and he noticed something. Hello. Look at that. When I get into the tub, the water level goes up, and when I get out of the tub, the water level goes down. Ha <laughs> ha! Eureka! I, um, don't get it. Well, I can calculate how much volume something takes up by how much water it displaces. Yep, still not with you. Uh... Now, I'll give you an example. How much water would be displaced pushed aside if I put this ball in the water? It's light, so not much. Ah, it doesn't matter how heavy it is. It only matters how much space it takes up. Watch. Ha! Ah, you see? The same volume, huh? I think I see. How much water will be displaced when I put this bowling ball in? Uh, more, because it's heavier. Ah, nope. It doesn't matter how heavy it is. It only matters how much space it takes up. Watch. Oh. You see? A simple and easy way to measure something's volume. Archimedes, one of the greatest and cleanest scientists in history. Join us next time for more Max Hi The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic. And you will be granted entry.
send in the next applicant. <laughs> okay, don't let them see you. Don't let them see you. Okay, magic smoke. And here we go, big entrance. Behold it is I, overwhelm all. You again. I only have to demonstrate magic one time, and you have to let me into the Wizard Academy. And last, last time does not count. So prepare for your mind to be boggled and your eyes to also be boggled because I shall do a trick. I will just get to it. Here is a book, behold! And now, feast your stupefaction as I produce another book, ha ha! And then, two or three more times, behold, as I put, as I, that's good, behold! And now, look upon the wonderment as I stack these books on top of each other, like this. And now, feast more stupefaction as I, I cleverly move the books off the table. And now, now comes the magic word. Now, I say the magic word. The magic word! And behold, the book is levitating. It is completely off the table. I have done it. Magic. No. No? Not magic, that's science. But the book is levitating. No. Look at it, it's not even touching the table. No, it's being supported by the books below because of the center of mass. Preposterous. I'm afraid it's very posterous. Each book is balanced on the one below in a way that the center of mass is behind the edge of the book below. And the entire stack center of mass is behind the edge of the table. So it may look like magic, but it's science. So... I can't get into the Wizard Academy? No, I'm afraid not. I, uh, good... Alakazam! You will rule the day that Overwhelmo did not I will return, and then you will see. Oh, ow. Now it's time for one of my favorite scientific terms, the Magnus Effect. I am Magnus, and behold my effect. No, the Magnus Effect has to do with things that are spinning. Things like these cups. And here's a great little Magnus Effect flyer you can make at home. It's super easy. Get two styrofoam cups and tape them together at the bottoms using science tape. Then get some elastic bands and make a long one by tying them together. Take your elastic and you wrap it around the cup like this. Then hold the elastic on the bottom, remember, like that. And then let them go. They fly up and out. The reason why it goes up and stays in the air is because it's spinning, creating moving air over the top. Moving air has lower pressure, which means it's pushed up by the higher pressure underneath. And that is called the... It's coming. It's just... Oh, come on. Oh. Now, um, mm, the Magnus Effect. Yes. So, let's max it out. Magnus it out. See how much better that sounds? No, 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 max. Max it out. Check it out. Magnus Flyer 2.0 Stand Elastic Slingshot. Wrap it around. Remember, for the Magnus Effect to work, your cups need to be spinning this way. The front side rotating up. Oh, and there you have it, the Magnus Effect. Hi, Magnus, I'm out taking over the show. It is now Science Magnus. That is my effect, slightly improving the name of science TV shows. Science Magnus. Uh, but now, watch as I put a large loop of string through. What? <laughs> Pushing string. How does this happen? It... Hello? I don't suppose it's the Magnus effect? Uh, no, it's not the Magnus effect. No, that's, it's all right. I'll be in my lair if you need okay. me. Okay, right, bye. 
Right, where was I? Uh, I believe you were at, uh, the reason why this works is... Right, pushing string. How does this happen? It's all because of inertia. Tumbling flying tips. When flying or tumbling, you want to be indoors, away from any wind or other kinds of moving air. A long hallway or a big room is best, so you don't run out of space. The angle you hold your board is important. Too much tilt or too little, and it won't work. Keeping your tumblewing in the air is mostly about the speed that you walk. Too fast and the tumblewing will go over the top, too slow and it'll fall. Finally, practice, practice, practice. Happy tumblewing flying! Max Historica. This is Archimedes. What? Who said that? Uh, it's me, the narrator. We're doing a segment. Oh, well, I was working. Don't sneak up on a guy like that. Uh, <clears throat> this is Archimedes, an ancient inventor and one of the greatest scientific minds ever. Ooh. <laughs> one of his famous inventions was the Archimedes screw. Ooh, um, uh, mm. ah. <laughs> Which was used to make holes in wood. No, that's not what it's for. It's, it's for water. Uh, right. Used to make holes in water. What, what, what? No! Look, did you even do your homework? I, um... Hold on. It's, uh... Yeah. It's, here, it's here somewhere. Uh, um, look, I'll just show you. You see, in ancient times, we had many uses for something that could lift water up from a well or to take lake water uh, from uh, the lake and put it into a farmer's field and that sort of thing. Ah, okay, I've got it from here. So, Archimedes invented a screw and he drilled a hole in the side of that container. No, no, no. Uh, look, just just sit down uh, uh, and I'll, I'll explain it, okay? I am sitting, I'm in a voiceover booth. Good for you, now be quiet, now look. What you do is you put the screw in the water like this, and then you want to raise the water higher, you see? And so turn it around like so, and the water fills each gap in the screw, and it starts to come up. It gets to the top, and look at this. Look, we've got water coming at the top there. The water is being pumped up. It is the first water pump. I see. Still seems like a lot of work to fill a glass, but it's very cute. No, we made them bigger. We obviously were not going to make them this big. This is not very useful. Uh, is right, it? Yeah, Archimedes, one of the greatest scientific minds ever. <sighs> I'm an acid, and I'm a base, and we are enemies. Oh, <gasps> well, we're not really enemies. Yeah, that's true. It's all about how we react chemically. You see, as an acid, I really want to give protons away. Protons. Who needs your protons? Get your protons here. Protons, I got more than I want. I don't need them anymore. And bases, we need protons. We'll do anything to get them. Uh, protons, you can protons away. I'll take some, I'll take some protons. You think that when you get these two together, you'd have some pretty great chemistry. But the truth is, when they're together, they often don't react. Whoa. That is, until water gets involved. Once you have water, acids and bases react. Here, take some protons. All your bases belong to us. <laughs> take, take some protons. I don't need more. I want there more. I want have more some protons. Here. Water is a solvent, allowing the chemical reactions to take place. <laughs> Depending on the strength of the acids and bases, that reaction can be mild. Would you like a proton? Oh, no, really, I could. Please, please take it. Oh, well, thank you, that's very generous. Have another. Well, perhaps, maybe I will. Here's yes. one. Okay, which, um, maybe just one. But if the acids and bases are strong, the chemical reaction can be really extreme. <laughs> this is what's going on in the antacid tablet, and why, without water, nothing happens. Oh, water! Water! Come on! What'd you do? Oh. <laughs> The case of the missing friction! It was rough all over in the big city. My toughest case yet, and I felt like I was getting nowhere. Someone stole all the city's friction. And it was my job to find out who and get it back. But after a week, I was no closer to solving the case. It was hard to get anything done now that there was no friction. 
Uptown to downtown, people were sliding all over with no way to stop themselves. It was chaos. Chaos, I tell you. But if there was any detective that could solve the case, it was me. But it's like my grandma always said, it's tough to follow leads if you can't sit in your chair. Nothing stays put in a city without friction. And you never appreciate something till it's gone. The phone rang. Sure, I wanted to answer it, but it slipped through my grasp just like this case. The mayor was on the line. He wanted to know if I'd made any progress. But I felt I was going in circles. I, I'm a little... I'm gonna have to call you back, Mr. Mayor. Without friction, you couldn't do very much at all. It was going to be my toughest case yet. <laughs> yeah! My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max!